Hey, welcome back. In the previous video, we built the character blueprint. In this video, we are going to build the player controller. But before we start that, we need to fix two issues. In the previous videos, I made two errors. The first one revolves around the input bindings, specifically the game controller. And the second revolves around the crouching. So we need to fix these. If you don't fix them, pay uh, very close attention. If you don't fix these, you're going to have problems um, going ahead after you're, you're going to have problems. So, but before we even start that, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It only takes a second and it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. It's free and it only takes a second. Now let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to do some fixing. Uh, the first issue is like I mentioned was the, was with the keyboard bindings. So let's go up to settings on the top, right? Click settings and select project settings. Now scroll down on the left and click input. Now let's see. The first issue is under the axis mappings and the forward motion. Uh, I mistakenly, uh, for some strange reason, this, it should say on your screen, um, gamepad right thumbstick, and that's incorrect. The gamepad uh, thumbstick should be on the left. And because this is forward motion, it should be, I believe the Y axis. So let's correct this gamepad, click left and where it says gamepad left thumbstick Y. I believe that's correct. Click Y axis. And just one more right underneath where it says right motion. Uh, we forgot to add a, uh, the gamepad. So click this plus sign, add, click none and choose gamepad. And for the left thumbstick, right motion, that's going to be the y'all. And the y'all is left to right, horizontal. So that should be the X axis, the X axis. And that's pretty much it for that fix. Now I'm going to go a step further. You don't, you don't have to do this, but I'm just doing this uh, just to make things more um, <clears throat> easy. Um, under where it says turn rate, uh, yeah, turn rate gamepad, turn rate um, that has to deal with when it's turning. That has to deal with left and right horizontal. So that's going to be y'all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to. You don't have to do this, but just to make it easier on me or on, or on us, I'm going to type y'all for the turn rate. Okay. For the turn mouse, same thing, because y'all is left to right horizontal. And that's the X S the X axis. And for the lookup, that's going to be the pitch. Again, you do not have to do this. Just doing this just to make it easier to understand. So that's pretty much it for the fix. Hopefully I didn't miss anything else. Uh, the next issue is, let's see, it's, it's under the character blueprint. So let's open BP underscore character and choose the character movement. And I totally forgot to, to enable the crouching. So go to the details panel, type in crouch and under nav movement, movement, uh, make sure you click can crouch. Compile and save. And that's pretty much it. Now we can finally start, um, the, uh, <laughs> now we can finally start the uh, player controller uh, tutorial, but you know what? Let's pause that. Not just yet. Now <clears throat> I, just to let you know, here's where this tutorial differs from the actual, the, the previous one from the official unreal engine, uh, YouTube channel. 
in the original one, um, Epic Games, their developers or whatever in this in the tutorial, they placed and other and pretty much all the other tutorials that you that you're going to find on YouTube or the Internet. They're probably going to most likely direct you or tell you to put the character controls in the actual um, character blueprint. This is where this tutorial uh, deviates, uh, makes a make, make, makes a, uh, a major detour. What we're going to do is we're going to put all the controls outside of the character blueprint into the player controller. Uh, I believe it's the um, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's the the proper way to do it. Um, it's a little more complicated, but it's a lot more. It, it, I think it's a lot more. um organized because it's separate from the actual uh, character blueprint. So if you want to use another, if you want to build another blueprint and um, you don't have to worry about copying and pasting the actual controls from the original character blueprint into the new one. So if that makes any sense. Oh, and also please remember um, this character because the character blueprint and the the player controls are separate. You need to make sure that the character in, in your, your projects, you need to make sure that the player controller, this BP controller or whatever you name it, uh, you need to make sure that it's connected to this actual blueprint, because if it's not connected to the actual blueprint, um, your character, you're, you're going to be wondering why the character is not actually moving. You, I mean, you put the controls in, but you're 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 pressing the key, you're pressing the keys on the keyboard or the game. You're using the gamepad, and the character isn't moving. So, just keep that in mind. In future, um, you're probably going to be using um, other other tutorials and adding and building upon this one and adding uh, extra features. Um, and certain things are not going to work unless you. Um, keep certain things in mind, but let's get started. So we're going to be building the player controller. So in the first video, we created this blueprint BP controller, which is the player controller blueprint. So open that up. If it looks like this, click open full blueprint edit in editor. Now, uh, what you see is just looks looks like all the other, pretty much looks like all the other uh, blueprints. Again, um, here's another deviation from the original Epic Games tutorial. Um, I'm going, I'm we're going to be using multiple graphs just to keep things organized. That's all. Um, and uh, in the original Epic Games tutorial. Um, I believe they just did everything in the, in this event graph. We're going to be using at least three or four or five different event graphs just to keep things organized. And, uh, so there's going to be three, there's gonna be four, maybe five event graphs, and we're going to build those in order of, we're going to do the easy ones first, the easy, quick ones first. And we're going to do, um, the harder ones last. So the first one I believe, which is the easiest is let's see, I believe that's jumping. So the first thing that we're going to do is go over to on the left where it says graphs and hit that plus sign to add a new graph. And we're going to call this jump or jumping. Click compile. Now let's right click and let's type in input. Uh, you know what? And type in input and jump. All right. Next, we're going to, I believe what we're going to, what we want is right click and get um, character. I believe that's what um, get player character. 
And you know what? We're going to duplicate this. Hold control with this highlighted and press W. Now from the get player can get player character, we're going to click and drag out and we're going to type in jump, I believe. Type in jump and select jump. Connect that to press. And for the release, drag out and type in, I guess it's stop jumping. Let's type in jump again. Oh, you know what? Let's drag this from the player can the player character type in jump and click stop jumping. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this for organizational purposes, purposes, having these multiple, um, uh, get player characters just to keep these organized, but you can just drag these from one, one, uh, just one, but just again, just for organizational purposes, that's what I'm doing. Okay. And let's highlight these click and drag and press C to create a comment and type jumping and you don't have to do this. Let's change the color. Okay. Now I believe that's pretty much it for jumping. Okay. The next graph that we're going to create is let's see the crouching I believe or the mouse. Let's do let's do the mouse. So add another graph and type in mouse. Input space. Okay, so now we have uh the mouse graph. So what we're going to do with this is right click, type in input and let's see, let's type in mouse. Let's scroll all the way up. And let's see, as you can see, okay, as you can see, we have under input axis events. Um, we have look up and we have turn and we can also see, uh, we also see where it says mouse and mouse, uh, mouse pitch and mouse y'all, uh, y'all mouse y'all. Um, this is why, uh, this is why I act I, I added this actual text to help us organize and find this stuff easier. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just the way I'm doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these two. So we're going to add, let's see, look up and turn, I believe it was called. Okay. Now again, the pitch that's, that is the, let's see the pitch that is the, that's up and down the Y axis, I believe. And the turn is the y'all. Oh yeah. Left to right. So, so we're going to click and drag and type in add type in pitch, add pitch input and let me check something. Okay. Add pitch input and drag from the axis value over to the pitch input. Now there's one thing that uh, we need to do 
And since uh, this, uh, the controls are not inside the, the actual player pawn or the character pawn, um, where it says target, this is not going to work. So we need to actually um, target this to the actual player uh, player character. And the way that we do that is we're going to right click and I believe is it's called get pawn or player pawn. There you go. You know, we're going to click that and control W to duplicate that and drag that down here. Again, you don't have to do that. You can just drag it. You can just use both. Uh, use one, this single, this single node for both. But for organizational purposes, this is the way I'm doing it. Um, so we're going to uh, drag uh, and connect the player pawn. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Let's click and drag that out and type in add pitch. Make sure the context since it's context sensitive <clears throat> and click controller pitch. And I believe that should work. Okay. So the target is the pawn. If you don't do it this way, if you leave the target out, um, it's not going to work. And if you actually, if you're actually following um, a different tutorial and you're adding, you're building upon this one and adding features, make sure for the target, you're using this get player pawn and connect it to the target or else it's, it's not going to work. This is, this is the, one of the major deviations from the original um, tutorial, but, um, you can actually attach this player controller because it's a, uh, what's the word? It's kind of agnostic, um, blueprint agnostic. You can actually get this to work with other, um, blueprints or possess other, um, act uh, other pawn character pawns and get them to work. So. We're going to do this, do the same at the bottom, click and drag and type in add y'all and click that and add. Okay. And add that, connect the axis value to the value. And I believe that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much it for the mouse input. I think that's pretty much it. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to add another comment and let's see, this is the mouse. Controls. All righty. I think we have three more to go. Those were the easiest. The next one is, I believe, crouching. So click and add another uh, event graph. And in here, we're gonna type in crouch. And that's gonna give us our uh, input action. And we're going to drag out and type in crouch. I don't think that's going to work. Okay. We're going to type in get player pawn. You know what? We're going to right click this and copy this. And drag that out. And let's see. Type in crouch. That, no, that didn't work. Let's see. Let's type in crouch and turn off context sensitive. Take that off. Type in crouch. And click crouch. What was that? I think that was under character. Okay. So instead of uh, get player pawn, we're going to get. Uh, Let's see. 
get player character, I believe. There you go. And this should work. Okay, there you go. All right. And let's connect the press to the node. And we're going to do another one. Let's copy this and paste it. And drag that out and type in un. I think it's uncrouch. Uncrouch? Uncrouch. And connect those. So let's see. For this. For this graph, we use player uh, get player character for the crouching. For the mouse, we use get player pawn. And for the jumping, we use get player character again. Now, the next one, I believe, let me copy this, cut this, because I'm pretty sure we're going to need that for the next, the last two. Um, and I believe that's pretty much it. for this event graph, but there's something else that we need to do to get the crouching to work. Now, if you remember in the previous, in the earlier video, uh, I think it was the animation blueprint video. We left, there was a variable. There's a, there was a crouch variable that we left and we, we actually, actually, we could have actually set up that variable then, but I wasn't thinking correctly. But anyway, we need to go back to the animation graph and set that variable. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're gonna, let's see. Let's go back to the map, to the content browser and open up our animation blueprint. So you remember this right here. Let's see. I'm just gonna close this right here. Okay. So we have the event graph and the animation graph. Uh, so if you remember, we have this macro right here and let's double click that and we have our variables. We set the air variable in air and the speed variable. And we said we were gonna come back and get this. So what we're gonna do is um, get, uh, type in try, get pawn, or just copy this over here, drag this over, try get pawn owner, and we're going to drag this out and I believe we're going to get, we need to type in movement, get movement component. And uh, we're going to get the movement component from this, which is this. And we're going to click and drag out and we're, I believe we're going to type in crouching is crouching and that's going to tell us if we're crouching now let me do just a little brief explanation of what's going on as best i know unreal engine has uh let's see it actually has a uh, a crouching feature built into it and so that's what this is we don't really need to set it up Un again unreal engine has a crouching feature um, already built into each uh, blueprint. So all we had to do is just drag out from the player character, drag out and um, connect to that function. So it's already built in. The, the feature is already built in, so we don't have to do much. So what we're doing is we're triggering or we're we are enabling that built in crouch feature. And what we're doing is we are getting that pawn, the anime, um, we're getting the pawn, which is, um, which is this character. And we're grabbing, we're, um, we're connecting to the 
to the uh, the movement component, which is this. And we're checking and we're asking to see if it's crouching. And that will spit out a return value and which will um, set this value, uh, set this, this value, uh, this variable. And I think that's pretty much it for the crouching. Now the next two hardest ones, uh, let's see. Okay. Three down, two more to go. So our next event graph is going to be, let's see. Let's type, let's do the movement. Um, yeah, let's do the movement. So create another graph and type in movement. Now, if you want, you don't, you can actually, if you want, you can, you may, you may be, you can put this in the, the main or original event graph, but I'm just going to do this again, just to make it, um, just to make things, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, more organized. So create that. I'm going to compile that. Let's right click. Um, let's type in forward. And let's get our forward motion axis axis event. And let's also get, uh, let's type in input and get our right, I believe, move right, scroll, type that in, scroll up and move uh, right motion. That's what we called it. Okay. So we have to forward. Uh, let's see. We have the forward at the top and the right on the motion at the and the right motion at the bottom. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click and drag off. Now, you know what? Let's type in. Let's right click and type in. Uh, get player pawn. I believe we need to do that. And let's drag off that. I think add movement input. I think that's what we need to do. Click this, copy it. Let's move that down. And let's connect this. connect that at the bottom. And again, I'm just making these doubles just to make things organized. And again, make sure when you're following um, another tutorial, this get player pawn, you probably want to pull this one out first, drag and then drag out and add whatever the tutorial is suggesting to you. Now, um, next we want to, let's see, let's connect this axis value. You know, what, let's do the, let's just work on the top first. Connect the axis value to the scale value. And what we want to do is get the I think it's the the forward vector for the top, and we're going to do that by I believe it's called a uh, get um, control rotation. Hmm, why is there two? Okay, get control rotation. So this is going to get the, the, the rotation of the pawn. And what we, what we're going to do is we're going to take this drag out and we're going to break this. Make sure you click, uh, you have context sensitive. 
checked and just scroll down and it will say break rotator. And this is just going to split um, this rotator into three values. And we're only searching. We need a we need a vector right here and we only need the the yaw vector, which is the Z. We and we don't need the other values. So all the other values need to be zero from my understanding. And um, we need to break these apart and then create a uh, another rotator and convert that into a vector that we can use. So anyway, so right click, create a controller, a con uh, can trade, uh, <laughs> right click and get a control, get control rotation, break the rotator and drag out from the y'all and scroll down. Uh, you know what we need to, we need to type it in, uh, make rotator and hold control and just drag this down to y'all. So we made another rotator that's zeroed out, at least on the roll and the pitch. Um, from here, we're going to drag out and type in get forward vector. Type that in. And now we have our vector value and plug that in right there. And I believe that's pretty much it. Now what we're going to do uh, for this at the bottom, we're going to copy these, duplicate those. And here, and so we're going to drag out and instead of get forward, we're going to type in get um, right. Click that and drag that over. And connect it to the that vector. And I believe we're pretty much set. Let's uh, right click and type in get control rotation and as you can see if you highlight it says target target is pawn and right beneath it it says uh, target is controller we want to get the controller so let's delete these connect that duplicate that And there you go. That's pretty much it. Four down. I believe that's four. One, one, two, three, four. Four down and one more to go, which is going to be the hardest, I believe. <laughs> if that wasn't hard enough. Now, um, one more graph, and that is what is it? The gamepad. How are we going to do this? All right, so let's right click and type in gamepad. Scroll up to our input bindings, and as you can see, we have pitch. And type in gamepad again. And let's get y'all. The pitch is up and down. And the yaw is left to right, side to side, horizontal. So how are we going to do this? Uh, first, we need to, uh, let's see. Let's type in get player pawn. Let's get that. I believe we had that in the movement as well. Yeah. So get player pawn 
And from that, let's drag out and let's see, add. Let's see. This is pitch, add pitch. No, that didn't work. Uh, let's see. Add controller pitch. And let's connect these. Now, what we want to do is we need to um, this axis value and connect that over. But we don't we don't want to do that. Uh, what we want to do is to um, we want to be able to have some sort of control over this um, this value, and we'll do that by um, connecting it, connect, connecting it to, um, about a couple, a couple, a few other variables. So let's go over to the left of the screen on the left and create two variables. The first one is, let's call it base turn rate. And where it says boolean, boolean, boolean. Uh, click that and change it to a float, compile and save. Right click that and duplicate it. And let's call this base lookup rate. Compile and save. And for this base rate, um, the previous tutorial they had it at 45 for both. So set those to 45 the default value and compile and save. Now, next, what we're going to do is let's see, we're going to click from the axis value, drag out and type it in the multiply symbol or type in multiply. And click multiply and connect the output into the add controller pitch. Okay. We also want to click, we're going to add another pin. So click this plus sign. And what is this lookup rate? We're going to grab, click and grab the variable, drag it out. And let's see. Let's drag it and hover and just drop it over the bottom. So what's going to happen is this axis value is going to be multiplied by this base lookup rate. And we also want to connect something else. So click and drag that off this value and type in Delta. And choose, let's see, get world, get world delta time, delta in seconds. And this is basically, basically going to allow us to control, have some sort of control over the movement. So I believe that's pretty much it for up here. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to copy these just to make it easy. Um, uh, select uh, get player pawn, select the, the multiplier, select get world delta. Let's duplicate that. Okay. And let's see, let's drag off from the get player pawn and add control y'all. So this one is y'all, the gamepad. The turn rate is the y'all. So connect those two. And we're going to connect this and connect the axis value 
And the last thing is, let's see, it's the base lookup rate. And I believe that's pretty much it. Everything is set up, hopefully. I'm just going to create a quick game mode just to test this out. So, all right, click play. Oh, oh something didn't go right. Let's see. Let's go to the controller. Let's see. All right. Let's try to fix this issue. I believe this issue is in the movement. So let's see. Move right. Okay. Right here. Here's the culprit right here. This is not connected. So make sure you connect this at the bottom for the right motion. Connect the axis value to the scale value. And that should be it. I would be shocked if it didn't work now. Okay. All right. So again, don't do this. We'll tackle this in the next video, but I'm just doing this to check to see everything is working, working fine. All right. As you, as you can see, he's moving around. Take a look at that. And let me use the game pad. Alrighty then. Let's try to jump. Oh, he's jumping. And let's try to cut the crouch. Oh, he's crouching. Alrighty then. So that's pretty much it for this video. We accomplished a lot. So what did we do uh, in the beginning? We fixed two issues. Make sure you fix these two issues or this would not work in the beginning. That was the input bindings mistake that I that I made that I left out surrounding the gamepad. So make sure you, you fix those. In the second, you have to make sure we enable the crouch in um, the, the character movement. After that, we actually started to tour, start. We actually started the tutorial, and there we set up the player controller, and we created separate. Um, we created separate uh, event graphs for the um, the jumping, the crouching, the mouse input, the game in the gamepad input, and the movement. So. Thank you for watching the video. Um, if you like this video, if it was very informative, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, you know, it only takes a second and um, it helps a lot. You guys take care and I'll see you in the next video.